Hey everybody, welcome back to Organic Chemistry. My name is Todd Rothman, and in this video we're going to go over the separation technique for amines. Now, the first thing I want to do is I want to talk about the trend. So we're finally going to get the problems at the end of this segment. Uh, you've probably been like patiently waiting to find some problems while well, they're coming up. But before we get to that, let me talk about the trends and the basic idea of what you need to know from this segment, okay, from this video. The first thing is you have to kind of have an idea of the general uh, acidity relative to other things. So, for example, carboxylic acid or hydrochloric acid is uh, the most acidic in our chart here. Of course, there are other things that are more acidic than hydrochloric acid, but this is the ones that we see often. Now, carboxylic acid is around 5. Now, notice that carbonic acid, H2CO3, so that's a carbonic acid is C double bond O with OH twice, like that. So carbonic acid is actually 6, so it's not as acidic as carboxylic acid. See that? And you have to recognize that. Now, carbonic acid has two different acids, left and right side of it. So if you lose the first H, that's 6. But if it's negative, right, so now it's Na, let's say NaHCO3, that's what that, that is. Well, to lose this H is down here, it's 10. So you see, that's um, H2CO3, oh, Oh, this is an error. Okay, I'm glad I caught that. Um, so NaHCO3, right? Not that. So NaHCO3, that one is 10. Okay, so it's very important to recognize that once you lose the first H, it's even harder to get rid of the second H. So remember, the smaller the number, the more acidic, right? So this is more acidic on top. That you, should, you guys should definitely know by now. And this is the least acidic. Okay, so then notice that ammonium ions, and I'm using this as our general template, 9 to 10. That's ammonium or aminium or like a, any kind of uh, nitrogen that's positive is going to be 9 to 10 around that range. Okay, so notice that phenol is 9 that you need to know for the next, uh, next chapter. So phenol is around 9, so it's more acidic than most of the amines that we're going to talk about. Okay, and for our purposes, we're going to think of it as phenol is more acidic than amine. Now, also, notice down here, amine, remember this one, this is where it's an amine that's losing an H, right? We talked about that. So, if this loses an H, becomes RNH minus, that is very unlikely, it's 30 or more. So, that's not going to lose an H, right? So, you notice this trend, I want you to kind of study this, write this down in your card, you know, kind of get this down. You have to kind of have a general idea of where these things fall. And this is enough information, these are the things you need to know. SP carbon is an alkyne, right? So if it's a, it's a carbon, triple bond carbon with an H, that's, whoops, let me uh, move that down. That's right there. So that, this is the trend that you should know in your general numbers. That's the first thing you have to understand is who's acidic and who's more than others, okay? All right, now the next thing I want to talk about in terms of the, the setting this up, here's what we're going to do. We're going to take, let's say, a molecule. And we're not going to do necessarily this first step, but we're going to do some kind of reaction, and it becomes A plus B plus C, for example. Now, in the this is the application of this. So, in a lab, we have to be able to get isolate the different molecules from each other. So, this is the application of a separation technique. So, how do we separate things from each other? Well, there are a lot of different techniques. If they're polar, you could do electrophoresis and maybe have them migrate to different ends of uh, like the cation and the anion sides of the um, of the technique, of the apparatus. So, I mean, there are different things like that. You could boil them out at different times and then capture them. And, you know, you could distill. So there, there are different things you can do. In this particular technique, we're going to separate them based on their polarities, on their charges. Okay, we're going to use acid-base reactions to separate them. So if we want to get A, B, and C in its own separate area, A, B, and C, we can use an acid-base reactions and make them go into different layers. Okay, so that's what we're going to do, and that's what this is all about. 
this whole thing is about getting A, B, and C. So whatever molecule this is, we break it apart in the lab into three things. We want to get them separate from each other, and that's what we're going to do. So if you can imagine, I mean, this is how you actually do this. Like, let's say you have a plant. Plants have a whole bunch of different molecules in them, and if you want to try to get them out, you know, this is, at some point, you're going to use a separation technique to do that, right? So this is kind of, you know, the basis for that. All right, now, the next thing I want to talk about is very important before we even begin understanding this. The first thing is the environment. Let's talk about the environment. So for the environment, we have this environment where we have a solution, right? This is water. So this is the solution. The aqueous, remember aqueous means water, aqueous solution. And then at the very top, we're going to have this ether layer. This is ether. Okay, so we have to have ether at the top, ether. Now, the thing is that we there. What that this is like water and oil. You know, you put oil and water, it stays at the top, right? The water, the oil goes to the top. So it's the same thing here. This is the hydrocarbon. This is the what we call the organic layer, the red. This is the organic layer, and what that means is that things that are not charged, that are neutral, are going to go into ether. So Let's write that down here. Charges, plus or minus, they go into water. Go into, I'll, I'll write aqueous. They go into the aqueous layer. Whereas neutral, they go into the ether layer, the non-aqueous layer. So remember, the charges are things that are hydrophilic. They like water. And non-charged things, hydrocarbons, primarily, right? Because that's primarily what molecules are made up of is hydrocarbon. So the organic stuff, right, the neutral stuff, they're hydrophobic, right? So they're hydrophobic. They're afraid of water. Okay, so this is the basis. So what we're going to do is, if you could imagine, we would have some molecule that we break up into three different things and they might do this on a test they might say you're reacting this molecule with this reaction and when you get the answers show me how to separate them right so then you have three different things here or something like that right and what you need to do is separate these from each other and what we're going to do is figure out the polarity the charges of these things before and then after we react it with some kind of acid base reaction and that's going to tell us whether it goes into an ether or a aqueous layer so the last thing that you need to do is you have to know about charges. It's very important that you understand this. And this is something that every, like when you go to class, they don't even bother telling this to you, but you really need to know this. Okay, so let's say I have a molecule, R, and it has an OH on it, or an R with a nitrogen on it, let's say NH2, or an R with a sulfur on it, okay? These are the most common things. And then let's say R, just R. Now R could be an alkene, it could be an alkane, it could be an alkyne, okay, but that's all it is, is just R, nothing else. So this is always, let's just deal with this one, it's always neutral, okay, it's hydrophobic, it's always going to be afraid of water, it's never going to go. So if you have an alkene, alkyne, or al uh, alkane, or alkyne, or even like benzene, like benzene, okay, these things are never going to go into water. So they always stay in the ether layer. They always are going to stay at the top in the red. They're never going to go into this, let's say, this blue area. They're never going to go in the blue area, okay? Because they're never going to be charged, okay? So that's one part, H2O. Okay, now, when you have an alcohol, if an alcohol is an acid, we have to think about what it looks like as an acid and a base form for all these different things. And you have to memorize this for yourself. You need to know this. And OH, it doesn't matter if this is carboxylic acid or if it's an alcohol or if it's a phenol. It doesn't matter. When you have an OH, no matter what's touching, it doesn't matter. Its acid form is neutral. But its base form is negative. You have to know that, negative. Whereas a nitrogen... And it doesn't matter if this nitrogen has one R, if it has two R's, if it has three R's. So this could be primary, secondary, tertiary. It doesn't matter. If it's primary, secondary, meaning it has one carbon, two carbon, three carbons touching it, doesn't matter. 
when it's an acid, it will always be positive. So you will get this thing to fill up the four bonds. So if I have three carbons, you need a fourth bond, so give it one H. But if you have one carbon, give it three H's to get the four bonds. So